So you've got two choices now. We can go next door and get 17 pints of lager. We'll start Mad Monday now. Or we can be fucking men about it and do something about it. This is the story of the 2007 National League playoffs. The bit you didn't see. There's a place in Super League up for grabs as well as promotion from National League 2. Produces this magnificent eye in great Yorkshire tradition. It's a feast of rugby with some really tasty moments. You want traditional brown sauce or are you going to exotic pick pick a lily? It's in me bones. I've been watching him 50 odd years and I know it. I put money on him. All Bally supporters this way. All Jersey supporters that way and keep working. Really six mil, don't fall me while I'm watching the ball, I'm sorry. Come on, Cass! Maybe dogs, maybe underdogs, but there's nothing better than beating a dog in your own backyard. Over the years, Rugby League Raw has seen plenty of passion. I live here, and I've always been here, and I always will be. And there'll be no shortage of that passion in week one of the National League playoffs, as Oldham entertains Swinton in a League Two eliminator. We need to win today, just to get pride of the Lancashire and stuff like that, yeah. I've been supporting Oldham for about 50 years, and it means a lot to me, yeah. From his time with Catalan Dragons, Oldham coach Steve Deakin has no problem communicating with French international Saïd Tamgar. <laughs> but Deakin is old and born and bred, so he understands today's local hostilities. It's only 10, 15 minutes down the road from here, and there's been a great tradition and rivalry between the two clubs. Um, we've played each other four times this year, we've won two, they've won two, so I guess you can say it's the, the final game in the five match rubber today. The game might not have gone ahead at all, though. Oldham Chief Executive Chris Hamilton nearly had a crisis on his hands. Here goes the damaged post, Rog. It actually started um, on Saturday night when we got a phone call from the football club saying that uh, after their match they were putting the posts up and the hinge on one of them had broken. Um, so at that stage there was no match because we had no posts, so it's been a bit frantic since then. Uh, fortunately, um, Rochdale Hornets have uh, allowed us to borrow uh, a set of their posts and uh, we've ended up using one of them, so the game goes ahead. All right. Never mind the post, Hamilton's relieved that Oldham still has a club. Amid a financial crisis, the Ruffyheads were relegated to League Two last season without a single point. 18 months ago up to the beginning of this year have been really tough, um, but we're very proud of the fact that um, we've paid off all our debts. Um, and we knew last season was going to be uh, a massive struggle, and obviously it was. And you know it has been very much an upward curve since then. And obviously here we are now in the playoffs. So I'm looking forward to it. The man of the match. Jeff's going to get the man of the match off you. Okay. Yeah. You, you know you're picking it, don't you? Uh, yeah, I was told. So they were going to try and. <laughs> no, we were told. <laughs> <laughs> Swinton coach Paul Kidd knows just how exciting playoff rugby can be. Yes! 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 Last season, his Lions side enjoyed a famous Golden Point win at Celtic before losing the League Two final. I feel like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> well, that last year, that last year, there's quite a few uh, personnel from last year moved on. Having said that, you know, I, th I think there's somewhere in the region of uh, 
10 players from last year's playoff squad that, that are playing today. So I suppose if it's tight come the last 20 minutes, uh, it might count a little bit in our favour in terms of playoff experience. Heads up, eyes up, all phones off. Congratulations, great season, fellas. You really deserve to be in the playoffs. Just another game. Normal circumstances, nothing different. From here on in, fellas, it's a completely different mindset. You don't get the excuse to say, oh, geez, we were shit today, let's get it right next week. Fellas, that game is over, it doesn't exist anymore. Most of all, fellas, we'll not put it on there, but it's an obvious one, we just enjoy. Your emotions are massive today, boys, you've got to control it. But geez, we have to be aggressive with these people. Everybody see that? Program. Oldham 2, Swinton 2. Judgment Day. Let's have a little look at what we've been through as a, as a group of players. We've had points deducted, we've had points taken off us, we've had bad performances, but I'll tell you what, we've got back up. Play quick today on these people, quick play the balls. Hey, don't go into a shell though. You can play football, play what you see. There is no pressure on us whatsoever, not one ounce of pressure. The only pressure that's on us is to perform so that we can walk off this field saying that we're going to finish this season strong. Don't go away from your, your normal principles. If you see an overload on one side, you go there, boys. That's football. Let's not go into our shell here. You can't fix anything now, so you know, don't, don't leave anything in the locker. Now I just, I just don't want to have Mad Monday tomorrow. I don't know why, mate. Mate, hey, I understand that. Boards of patience, boys, start strong. Everything's in the start. Kid might have stressed the importance of a good start, but it's Oldham who come out flying, blowing the Lions away in the first half hour. Hold him a chance of a dream start here, that was on Yango, this is Hughes, and Hughes will score! Great start! Go! This is Jay Duffy, good looking kick, but there's a, nobody in the amber shirt following through, so Byron Ford will pick up here, and he's broken ranks, he's broken through the first two tackles, he's on his way, he's played in Super League, this man, Byron Ford, has he got the strength, has he got the speed, he's got the lot! Take a bow. Why did Wayne stop then? Why did he stop? They up to a fucking three there. Let him run straight fucking through you. That's the former Keithley of Anne Hoyle, and this is Onyango. He's out, he's in, and he's over. Lucas Onyango, problems for Swinton. All them looking to keep it going, and that's exactly what they're doing here with Gino Costin. Oh, what a try. Mate. Gotta to, got to be ruthless here. Coral's having a massive influence in this game, and here's two bobs. Rob Roberts. Good football, boys. Good football. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's been truly painful for Swinton in this first half. 26 0 down. It's getting worse, another mistake. Matthew Pryor's with the knock on. But for uh, Oldham fans, well, it's been a real feast. Listen up. Get your fucking heads up straight away. Don't be sat there feeling sorry for yourselves. We're 40 minutes. We're 40 minutes of our season in theory left now. Now, what kind of reaction are we going to give? What kind of reaction are we going to give our 200, 250 fans that have come across to watch you today? I'll tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going out there. We're, going to, we're not going to bury our heads in the sand. Heads, eyes, up. I'd like to congratulate you on a great 40 minutes there. I thought that the last 10 minutes, when they had a lot of field position and a lot of possession, Jesus showed some character. I thought that your ability to work for each other just complements the, the character, the personal character and, and the comradeship that you've got. This game is not dead and buried, provided we can manage to score first. That's your first challenge. I'm still on the back there, getting excited. I'm more interested in the game than the bloody players are. No matter what happens, 
will be coming off this field and you can all feel a sense of slight achievement because we managed to get into the playoffs. But I'll tell you what, you'll feel like shit if you come off this field having not given everything that you've got. <laughs> been sweating for all my life and we've never had any wins yet. Not, no, no glory yet, so. Your first chance is to win the half. Get out there and show that we're not going to die. We're not going to lie down. We're going to get out there, we're going to play for some pride. And we're going to be strong, we're going to stand tall. Hey, no bullshit, no technical, tactical stuff and all that. You know what's needed. You, you, put this, you put this second 40 minutes to bed here, boys. Now we've got to be fucking enthusiastic when we've got the ball. Simple rugby and fucking everybody talk. It's from the wingers, centres, all the way in. Crowds here, you can't fucking hear one another, so talk to the guy next to you. Pass the message on, simple. Hold, sell, go! After the break, Swinton continue to make silly mistakes. But it's a much closer game in the second half, despite Oldham scoring first. It's taken a while in coming, but Hughes has got Anyango in for his second. It was simple. It's been back to the wall all afternoon for Swinton. They're here now looking for some consolation. They need one score today, and they've got one from Frey Gajor. Just leave me. That message is enough that he's just been on with just to lift now. 14 minutes to go up to lift. Try it less for Swinton then, so the restart. How are they going to react now, Swinton? Not very well, I don't think. Rob Roberts is in for his second. They shouldn't have needled them. Listen, don't, don't switch off here indeed. We give these people fuck all. Don't let them finish their season positive. Hey, let's be ruthless here. Swinton's fans, as defiant as ever, they really do give the team terrific backing. He's out! Penalty, penalty. Well, there's hardly any time left for them here now. Tackle complete. Here, Simi. Simi. Sir. He's not away, Chris. He's not a problem. OK, Chris. Oh, dearie me. Chris Hoffman, that really does sum up Swinton's miserable day. Back on, guys. No advantage. Oh, sick and tired of telling our pivots that. But why do you have to touch your foot? Just touch your knee. And it's all over. And he told him who've run away with this one by 36 points to six. They were unstoppable today. But for Swinton, heartbreak for the second successive year in the playoffs. And in truth, they were never in this one. Oldham deservedly go through. You walk up here, you clap the fans, and you get your heads held up high. Because I'm sure you'll all be back in this position again. I'd really like to say, geez, let's get out and celebrate that great win and all that. Can't afford to do, boys. Uh, you've taken one step forward in a four-step challenge here. We've got over the first hurdle. We'll get a few learns out of today and start aiming up for either working to New York. Congratulations, boys. You put a great 80 minutes well, together there. Well done. I'm feeling exactly the same way as you are, fellas. Disappointed. Upset, but I'm not fucking angry. Not in any way, shape or form. We've been through a lot this last few weeks to even get in the top seven, and we knew that before the game started. We've been through an awful lot together. A lot of miles, a lot of journeys. That's life. How good was that? Hey? How good was that? We live and we learn, and the journey goes on. And it starts again with the pre-season. Do you understand what I'm saying, lads? Don't bag each other, don't look for excuses, cop it on the chin, walk out of here with your heads up, and get on with life. So Swinton's playoff journey comes to a premature end. Cuts! But Oldham march on into the elimination semi-final. The opening games in the National League One playoff series begin with Whitehaven taking on lead. It's a comfortable night for the Cumbrians, their record try scorer David Seed scoring right on half time. 
while scrum half Carl Rudd's effort in the second half puts Haven out of reach. It sets up a tie with Halifax, who go through to the next round after a narrow win over Sheffield at the Shade. Week two action begins at the jungle as Castleford and Widnes battle for a place in the National League One Grand Final. Mick Nanin puts the visitors ahead, but the Tigers claw their way back to victory. Cass are now just one win from an immediate return to Super League, but Widnes will get another chance against the winners of Halifax versus Whitehaven. Halifax's half-built stand has become symbolic of the rugby club's decline in recent years, but at long last it seems hope is on the horizon. We've had a great season, finishing third was a real bonus for us. In terms of the general state of the club, we're financially sound, we have no debt, which unlike a lot of other clubs as you know, so that's, that's really great news for the club. So all in all, we're making small steps towards our objective, which is to be the best in of one club and ready for Super League when we get the chance to get in. impressed me coming from a big organisation is the spirit of the people around here just want to get on and make this club great again. How many have you sold? Loads? Hundreds, absolutely yeah. hundreds, fantastic. <laughs> the stand itself, yeah, it's an impediment because it's not attractive but the information that the council are uh, telling us at the moment is that it will be finished by tail end of next year so we'll have a fully functional stadium ready for the 2009 season. For Halifax coach Martin Hall, it's his last home game in charge. He's moving upstairs to become director of football, leaving his assistant Matt Callan to take his place. It's also the end of the road for Whitehaven's Dave Rotherham, who earlier in the week discovered his contract would not be renewed by the Cumbrian club. Yeah, I'm not going to walk around with chin on the floor. Yeah, I'm going to stay upbeat and enthusiastic, otherwise if I do that then the players will become like that, so I don't want that to happen. Are you expecting some sort of reaction from the Whitehaven crowd today in their favour? And... Oh, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, the reaction one in our favour is them cheering us on to, to a victory. He's done a good job, I think, and I don't think he deserved that really. To me it was uh, very good news because they don't seem to have performed as good over the last 12 months. I don't think the board's backed him. He hasn't had the money of like uh, Steve McCormack had there, but it's just one of them things, nothing we can do. Made it, made it. <laughs> Quality. What will win you a playoff game like today is a remarkable piece of skill. It might be a piece of courage where you might be hurting a little bit and you've got to get off the floor and make another big tackle. Oh, next to in the noose here, aren't they? Now the fact want to kick that fucking chair away in angers. You know, we're, we're not playing for the people who are moving on, the ones who are trying. You play for yourselves and the people that are proud to come and watch you. Your supporters, your families, they're all here. OK? That's who you're playing for. And another chance to play another week next week and the week after. And finish off on some glory for the year. Let's not fucking die wondering at Halifax, eh? Right, on your feet, let's go. Come on. Really need this fucking self-belief today. We've got to believe we can go out there and win this game. All my advantage, fucking shite. We just play a little bit of fucking grass. Come on, it's fucking there for us. Yeah. It's there. Keep this fucking journey going. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. One, three, yeah. One, two, three. Good luck, Halifax. It's the fifth meeting of the season between the two teams. Haven had won all four previous games, and after a nervy start, it's the visitors who register the first points of the afternoon. Take the two. Take the two points. Take two. It's a dummy half away to Trinder. Halifax pressing. Holroyd with a delicate little chip. Oh, it's fumbled by Newman. And Dave Lardner will score. First try for Halifax. Hey, what is it? Play off fucking rugby. We've got to be under that fucking sticks. The chances fucking come to the We have got to take them. We have got to take the fucking chances. This is not fucking second chances. Pressure here from Halifax. It's uh, Watson out to Penkovic again. Oh, that's a wonderful ball. Paul Ryan with a little pass on the inside. 
It's going to be Royston, is it? Yes, it is! Oh, it's obstruction. Why an obstruction back here? Nice little chip by Rudd, and a good chase as well, there's a heartbreak on here. Just about dealt with by the Halifax defence, but they've got a bit of momentum going now, Whitehaven. Leroy Joe out to Howard Hill. It's Seeds, has got the overlap. It's Kovacs! Yeah, it's getting great, well done, lad. Going well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. He's got him. Start again, start again up, yeah? This set of six, we keep him kick out of there. Watson, it's Smith back on the burst. Brave defending by Whitehaven. Penkovic whips it out. Trimbler right on the stroke of half time. What a time to score! Have a laugh, we've got back in the game. Needless to be turned over. The home side are in front at half-time by 18 points to six, and the prospect of progress in the playoffs is not the only thing that's got Fax fans licking their lips. Every last match of the season, Gene produces this magnificent pie. In great Yorkshire tradition. You know, you can't even lift this pie, it's full of that full of meat. It's not like your normal ones. Even the cafe at the end is getting really, really jealous about this. You know? It usually takes us a couple of hours to eat it, but anyway. Do you want traditional brown sauce or are you going to exotic with piccalilla? Let's build some press, yes, and earn the right to have some ball in there, 20. Okay, and when we get down there, don't panic. So, uh, but we've got to fucking earn the right to play some fucking rugby. Fuck the Ennis, fuck the penalties. No more. They will fucking crack. It's a fact. Talk is cheap. You've all took your two penalty and you're all saying the same things. You're not going to be judged by what you're saying here. It's what happens out on that field for 40 minutes. It's all come together, and finally. Um, Defence, attack, we seem to be going forward. Yeah, we were 19-6 up at their place and lost it, so we scored first, second half, then I'll be confident. If we don't, then I'll panic. We've played them four times already and, and been in front and lost. So we're hoping we'll stay in front this time. All right, fifth time, OK. <laughs> Get in there. Come on, facts! What's the important thing now? 18-6 down 40 minutes ago. What mustn't you do? Do not panic. Do not panic! So you've got two choices now. We can go next door and get 17 pints of lager and we'll start Mad Monday now. Or we can be fucking men about it and do something about it. What do you think? Right then. Let's fucking go. Get up and move around. That's all I need to say. You know what you've got to do. Come on! A respectable 2,000-plus yeah. crowd means overtime for Chief Exec Rob Hayes counting up the gate receipts. He's yet to see any of the game. I've just looked at the scoreboard and I keep hearing rules, but... You've seen <laughs> the nature of the beast is you don't see much of the game until until now really, when things quiet down in the office. It's always tough second half against Wyatt even. They've, they've done us on, on a number of occasions, so they've got a really big deep this second half. I'm looking forward to getting out there and seeing them. Right is held up. Hold! Wait. Slice ready to Go. react from W Hart. Use your foot, mate! Couple of dummies from him too. Here's Rod. Oh he's through! Can't run his through! Now did he get it down? He's got that down, surely. Never grinded. What's well, going while he's rolling? He's been held up after he's grinded it first. Grinded it first, yeah. okay. <laughs> Where was the doubt there? <laughs> Whitehaven are beginning to put a lot of pressure on here now. It's Leroy Joe. And it's Mattinson back on the inside. Stern defending right, required. Whitehaven within Wait, sight of the line. Go. It's Rod's kick. It's Calvert. Just about gets a hat to him. That's the shit, boys. 
Halifax. Looking for a very quick reaction here. Second. They're hanging on, they're hanging on. And it's a penalty. No, boys, boys, no. All right. We'll give Halifax the lead once more. Momentum back to the Yorkshire side. There's Watson. Little scamper from Dummy Hart. Southern. A good pass by him. This one's going to be held up short. These are pressing moments though. Hammered in by Wrench. Some muscular defending required. Whipped away from Domi Harp. It's in the hands of Holroyd again. Barculis! Two of them couldn't stop it. It's a vital score. Whitehaven under nine. It's all to Watson. Testing kick, but it um, should be covered here by Calvin. Oh, he slipped untidily. He's given away the scrum. Smith, quick out from the scrum. He's got ball and support. That should be it. Halifax in control now. Another kick from him. Carefully watched out of play, but it will be a dropout. The rod's going for broke. He's going for broke. He's gambled. And he's simply given away the penalty. Far. Hey, I can't knock him through speed of thought. Well, we're 10 behind. We're 12 behind. Now we're 12 behind. It's 32 points to 18. Halifax in control. Surely it's their day now. And to Joe. Jackson's trying to force his way over. Three, oh, and Royston are there to stop him. It's Madison. Kick for him, he's hit the post. Fatiola quick to react and scores. Yeah. That question, what's the score? Yeah. Right behind. 32 24. Too little, too late for Whitehaven as time runs out, not only on their season, but also on coach Dave Rotherham's time in charge. Halifax live to fight another week, but it's also goodbye to Whitehaven's long-serving centre David Seeds, who's decided to hang up his boots after 14 years at the club. You know, we had our chances to win, and um, unfortunately we let, them, let Halifax off the hook several times. Has it sunk in here that that was your last game? Um, no, not really. Well, no, probably you know, next week when we're not training them. The wife's getting me, uh, you know, when we reacquaint myself and my family, the wife's getting me to do chores around the house, that's when it'll sink in. Now, all to up with as they say. We were really thrilled with the result, and uh, it is nice in the game that counts, really, to beat the uh, Bowie team. And next week will be really tough. Uh, you know, full-time side, had a, a full week off. We're coming on the, on the back of a really heavy game, so it's going to be down to motivation and whatnot. You can get out the players over the next few days. The part-time club, it's the full-time team. We've got a week, a week off to prepare. We've had about three days. Um, so... Uh, you know, it's going to be tough, um, but well, actually, we've no chance of winning. How did we do it? Easy! Just like you said, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure playing with you. Whatever you do next year, we're away at Lee, fucking, fucking, there you go. It's been an absolute fucking pleasure. Good luck to you in the fucking future.
So, just four days later, Halifax are back in action with a trip to Widnes. For the part-time players such as centre and school teacher Damien Ball, it's a tough schedule. It's obviously quite hectic being a PE teacher. Um, you know, I've left school at half past three, nipped home, and then I've come straight at four o'clock, so uh, it's quite demanding, really. But we're not going to use it as an excuse, but uh, the intensity of the game and uh, obviously the, the severity of the game and how big a game it is, it's, it's going to be a massive task and it's been a quite a short turnaround for us, but uh, hopefully, you know, if we can do the right thing for 80 minutes and you know we're quite confident. Oh, they're the favourites, so the bookies' favourites. Uh, everybody expects the full-time team to win. Um, so there's no pressure on us. We, we've come here to enjoy the occasion. We've just got on a bit of a roll, you know, and uh, started winning some of the games, picking some points up, and that momentum's kept us uh, to where we're at at the moment. So hopefully that'll continue and take us out to the final. The unluckiest man in playoff history has to be Widner's coach Steve McCormack. In the last three years he's had two grand final defeats with Whitehaven and was on the losing side again last year with the Vikings. It is heartbreak for Steve McCormack. Three years in succession now. At the very last hurdle he's failed. It feels like the end of the world now at the moment, but uh, you know the, the, the players will, will bounce back. You know that's uh, they've, they've got some strong characters in there, and I'm sure they'll be back bigger, fitter, and stronger next year. Enjoy the challenge to become a fucking better player. Good shot. Four numbers at it. Turn it up. Take them down. Not this swinging crap we've been doing the last two or three weeks. Kick up the front foot. Okay. It's not always going to be a call, you kick up the front foot and the chase. These have been a work all fucking day, all fucking week. They played many days ago. No fucking excuses. One, two, 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 one, but the underdogs would bite back in a gripping game. It's Roberts for the line! He's over! Zucky now with eight! Tell him, stay composed with it. Yeah, they're targeting our right hand side, they'll do it all game, so make sure we are strong on that side. Here's Nani, good break for the Nani support with the Sabaki. Oh, 
celebrate. Yeah, just letting it out though, just keep everything calm. Ali Pax looking for the last word. It's hot! Just strong enough to get it! So Witness are on their way to a grand final, but Halifax's heroic Never Say Die team have pushed them all the way. I thought it was first class from everybody, um, but it just wasn't to be tonight. I was really pleased with the support, I thought the support was fantastic. Um, I think we won with the supporters battle anyway. We've had a few lean, lean years for whatever reason, um, you know, we've, we've sort of been the Neil men this year and not for next season. Uh, we'll go that one step further in, in both competitions. Look here, listen up. Listen up, listen. These games, there's a lot of pressure on it there. We know that. Doesn't matter how you win, it doesn't matter. It, the, the ugliest win, doesn't matter. The main thing is you've won. All right, so you've earned the right now to, to go and have another crack in the grand final. All right, we know ourselves, if we get ourselves switched on, you know, the motivation doesn't come any bigger than, than getting back into Super League, does it? But we've got to do the hard work. So well done. Don't celebrate it, because we've done absolutely nothing. All right, stick together. Let's have a good week. Well done. I think what Martin Hall's done, the team he's built and everything, I'm absolutely over the moon with him and I'm proud of him. Get my voice ready and we're back next season singing Martin Hall's praises again. Good luck, lads, for the rest of the season. Come on, Castleford. Castleford, hard luck and Super League, we're coming to pillage your village. After following up their landslide victory over Swinton with an even bigger win against Workington, Oldham are in Cumbria for the League Two final eliminator against Barrow. It's the third trip from Oldham, so we, we came up yesterday afternoon and I think that the boys are up for the game, I think that we're, we're well rested. Uh, nice little trip from the hotel, 30 minutes to get here and it just gives us that ability to start focusing for when we get to the ground. And uh, I think that the boys know what their assignments are, so it's just a case of of putting into practice what we're prepared for. This is why you play the game, boys, for the day. Get ready and go. I believe. Paul Crary's Barrow lost to Featherston in their first crack at reaching the grand final. It's now do or die for a place at Headingley. Well, I'm a Barrow lad at the end of the day, and that's what I've tried to put, you know, my finances in a year for and whatever, because the town's had enough bad news with employment and everything over the, over the last few years, and sport, especially with Barrow soccer, Barrow will be not being the forces that they were, so we're a close community, you know, as I've been, and uh, just want to try and put the town back on the map a bit on the sporting side as well. I thought they played well against Swinton too. Stands for jack shit. I know. Means jack shit. I don't mind a bit this, but I wouldn't like to call this one. I really wouldn't. It's a tough one. Yeah, we were fed us with absolutely bloody shanks, we were. All, right. All the best, champ. Cheers, mate. These lot have not been in a ship fight, right, for the last few weeks. Last time they were in a ship fight with Celtic at home, they got beat. Last time they were in a ship fight with us down here, they got beat. These were pretty much a right to left team, you know, so you're going to have to read it. The form that they've took into this game means absolutely nothing. Fuck off! Nothing! Knock it out of them! Don't let them read your play, don't get there early, get there late. Get into them boys and we'll get to the fucking grand final. Just trust me. On three, three, four, 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 four. Go on, battle boys! Barrow makes sure the Ruffyheads know they're in a battle early on. We need to get numbers into the tackle a little bit more. They're just, they're just playing it again too quick for us. Let's hunt them down, Steve. We've got to get up. We've got to blitz them here, mate. We've got to want it here. But with 25 minutes on the clock, it's Oldham who score the first try of the game. Centre Adam Hughes going over. That's because we've got quick plays. Five minutes later, though, it's Oldham asking more questions as James Coyle weaves through for their second try. <laughs> and a late first half penalty gives Oldham a comfortable interval lead. Boys, we're at 80%, they're at 66%. What we haven't got is any composure on their goal line. Let's start the set, the fucking half. Good. 
If we start the half good, it'll kick on from there. Yeah, remember last time? Remember last time we was in this position last time? We yeah, went yeah, out yeah. and we started fucking shit. Concentrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start proper. All the hard work you've done all the last season, pre season, is in this 40 minutes. We have done it before. Yeah. 20 points to 6 down, we can do it again if we play it smart. 40 minutes, boys, that's all it is. 40 minutes, boys, you're on final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Barrows' Mike Bassan scores the first try of the second half as Oldham's lead is cut to 10 points. This game's not over yet, mate. And for 20 scoreless minutes, the Ruffieds feel a bit of pressure for the first time in the playoffs. We need back to back, we need to keep them down here. Hughes calms the olden nerves with two late tries. It's a hat trick for Hughes, and the Ruffieds book their place at Headingley. great rugby from league tied then we should be up there with the big boys anyway I think next week when we go into the final on the big pitch against first and we'll hopefully touch wood we'll, we'll win the final. I'm on Bray, well played mate. It's very disappointing to be beat at home and not get into the grand final but like I say we'll, we'll live there's worse of people off than us and uh, we'll be there again to fight next year. We're exactly where we wanted to be ten months ago uh, we said about it, uh, three or four weeks ago, hey, uh, let's not have any celebrations here. Yeah. You know, we've got a four-step journey. <clears throat> I don't like defeat the best of the times, you know, with the winks or whatever it may be, but all the best to all them. I think they'll beat Featherston. Um, I think they're a really good side for uh, all of them, and um, we're you know, extremely disappointed. We ain't celebrating this win today, because we haven't won it. Let's stay humble here, people. No head in the clouds and all that type of shit here. Hey, let's stay humble here, uh, and we'll do the job next week. We'll finish the job next week. Finish well done, game, boys. It's grand finals day at Headingley, and in the League Two showdown, inform Oldham take on Featherstone Rovers. I expect it being a tough encounter. Uh, all of them are a you know, physical side. Uh, we've just got to make sure that we, uh, we rise to that challenge and, uh, and then kick on. And uh, hopefully, uh, our, I, think, I think we are the fitter side, we'll, uh, we'll tell in the end. It might be finals day, but there's nothing grand about the dressing room arrangements. For professional rugby league, I think it's a bit of an insult to both Featherson and Oldham, uh, you know, to have to dress in the same room as each other uh, and share the facilities, you know, on such a big occasion. Uh, it's not good for the game. Come on, you rovers! Featherston have pulled off a publicity stunt this year, renaming their stadium after a certain breakfast DJ from Leeds, and he's back home to watch the game. It's a mixture of excitement, nerves, and asking what's going on. So you don't know the rules? <laughs> I'm learning. I'll be honest, I'm getting there. I ain't going on Mastermind yet, but I'm getting there, slowly and surely. One of the things that we've stressed uh, all week is to make sure that we enjoy the occasion, but the best way to enjoy it is, is after the event. We're playing in front of a, a bigger crowd. Uh, than we're normally used to, or we're expecting something like 19, 20,000 today. So we're, we're sort of happy to roll along with the emotions of the day, uh, but mindful of the fact that we need to control those things.
The early scoring all comes from penalties, with Featherstone kicking two to Oldham's one to take a 4-2 lead. Good attacking platform here for Featherstone. And uh, this is Hanforth, and the pass intercepted. This is Adam Hughes. He did it at Barrow last week. He's got to do it at Headingley this week. It's go, go, go from the fans. Adam Hughes, you are the man. Stop it! <laughs> Talk like this, Yavin. Six, Featherston four, and there should be a couple of routine points for Gareth Langley to tack on here. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe he's missed it. His nerves are just beginning to jangle. Oh yeah, that was an easy kick, wasn't it? Both sides are full of nerves, aren't they? Absolutely. Featherston, David Hobbs' side driving in from here. Here's the great servant himself, Stuart Dickens. Acting half-back will be Swinson. It's across the line for Andy Kane. He'll put in the little grubber. Wayne McHugh, he doesn't miss those! Feather back in front here. Well, he's kicked hundreds of goals in his ten years at Post Office Road. And other names, Mr. Feb, you could call Stuart Dickens, he's kicked another one here, high and handsome. Offside lead, 10-6 at half-time. We're going to leg it up there and we're going to score 20 tries in the next half. But at half-time, Oldham have injury problems. Prop Tony Tonks is one of the casualties. We're struggling badly. Uh, too many injuries on the field, I think. Um, I'm worried for the second half. I think we might fall apart a little bit, unfortunately. Oh, fuck. He's taken bang on the chest, he's injured his ribs there. Um, it's, it's very painful when he's breathing. It, it could be broken, it, it could be just a bad bruising, but with it being so painful, um, you can't really tell if it's, it's cracked. But uh, with he's in so much pain, he really needs to, to stay off for now. I have big doubts, but you never know, do you? <laughs> Well, we're still looking for the first points of the second half, but Featherston have got chances here. There's a good driving run from John Whittle. They've got to nail him. He's not far short of the line. Featherston looking for the score. They're going to get one here. They will not stop Hanfell. Vital points. It stretches Featherston away into a 14-6 lead. Tonks, big fellow Ian Tonks there, gets the offload as well for Swinson. Gavin Swinson making the break, they're chasing him, that's great awareness, he looks up, he kicks, there's a race on here, and Wayne McHugh wins the race! Try for Featherston Rovers. It's two for McHugh. 20 points to six, Featherston lead now. Rob Roberts then uh, goes into the tackle with Field and with Blake. Where's a bit of uh, Archie Badge? Oh, what on earth is Blake Way doing there? That was a headbutt without doubt. Stupid. The bloody button in. Off. Richard Blake has gone. Hey. You've got a lot later. Seconds left to go now. I think they could have gone wrong, has done. It's agony for Oldham, it's going to be ecstasy for Featherston Rovers as the fans count down. Featherston Rovers have promoted, they are back in National League One. This little weird story that we've had with the Chris Moyle Stadium and all that. At the start of the season it was all a bit of a kind of joke and then it, to be here for the playoff and then to win. It's very exciting, and uh, hopefully we'll keep it going now. Congratulations on your win. You thoroughly deserved it. Uh, I wish you the best of luck next year. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. We're really disappointed with the result, but absolutely massively proud of the effort that the boys have put in from going through a season where we got relegated, never having won a game, to get into the last hurdle of the grand final. It was a big turnaround. Uh, hopefully, we can use it as impetus and, and go one step further next year. 
it means everything to the club. You know, it's the first time club have won anything since 1983. It's a big captain left in the cup at the end. You know, it means everything to me, like it does the club at Nesta Lads as well. Having finished in pole position during the regular season, Castleford Tigers prepare for the National League One Grand Final with a team bonding session on the go-kart track. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for the boys to get together and uh, go kart. You know, it's fast, it's furious, it's you know, it's, it's a man's, it's a man's game, isn't it? A bit similar to rugby league. Basically, we're coming twelfth at the moment, so I've got to make up a lot of ground. So basically, just putting the pedal to the metal and uh, trying to go as fast as I can to catch up to whoever's the limit. Just don't want to come last because the boys are giving to me. Unfortunately, Henderson's team in car one trailed from the start and then just fall further and further behind a field led by the dynamic duo of coach Terry Matteson and Ryan McGoldrick. I told him, don't let me down today. And I've seen him drive on the road and it's a bit scary, so... I, I thought we were in a bit of trouble when I was partnering with Terry, but um, I think a few of the boys were a bit worried they were taking the spot, a few spots up for grabs, so I think, I think they're taking it a bit easy on him. In the end, it's the Matteson and McGoldrick team who take the chequered flag, the glory and the bragging rights. Well, here the end of it now, all week, you know, about him getting his big win at the, uh, at the Grand Prix pole position place. Unbelievable. So uh, he won't be in a grumpy mood this week now. If you know those bikes, they, they would never let me win. Uh, that's just how competitive they are. I'm quite comfortable that um, our preparation is going to be right, but it's important to get away from training and rugby league. We've done so much of it. And again, whatever has happened throughout the year doesn't matter now. It all comes down to one game. The pressure's fine, but it's how you handle the pressure. And we've been pretty good with the majority this year. Witness are also revved up for the big game and arrive at Headingley in defiant mood with coach Steve McCormack keen to put the heartache of previous grand final defeats behind him. Last year means absolutely nothing now. You know, we've, uh, we've come forward from that. You know, there's quite a few players what were involved in last year and you know, a few players that have left, so it's totally irrelevant what happened last year as far as we're concerned. It's, it's a big game for us now. Everyone's relaxed, focused, and uh, you know, we set our goal out in November to get in Super League and we won't step away from that. Dead simple again. Right, we play to our full capabilities. They play to their full capabilities. We still win. It's as simple as that. All right, let's not complicate things. You do it for one person only, and that's yourselves. All right, we're going about teammates. We're going about the club. Yeah, fantastic. The only person you need to worry about, and the only person you do it for, is yourselves. Trust is a big word, boys. Trust. Trust the man next to you, trust that what we've fucking done to get here is going to work again today. Trust in your ability, trust you're going to make the right decisions. Enjoy the challenge, enjoy the collisions, what it's all about. Squeeze the ball, win the collisions, get numbers in. There's not much else needs to be said, eh? We know what's expected of each other. We talk about making people proud, we make each other proud out there. Do what you do, man. Whatever it takes, be remembered. So one, two, three. Tigers! Come on, boys. Start fast, boys. Oh, Start fast. fast. Give me his attitude, Swats. Come on, boys. Enjoy it. It's a 20,000 plus sellout for a game estimated to be worth £4 million to the winners. Castleford have the best of the early exchanges and two Danny Brough penalties in his final game before a move to Wakefield put the Tigers four points in front. Here's Henderson for Dummy Hart. No Brough. Little general at the heart of that midfield for Cass. It's nicely waiting. Moran has it. Oh, he's lost it. He's lost it. And suddenly Castleford in a terrific position. Wide right. Back to Brough with the drop kick. Danny Brough's tiger feet working we magic for Castleford. That extra effort on to, to get to Brough, we need it. All right, he's just he's playing in a dinner jacket at the moment. Here's Brough to beat the scrub. Castleford are really dominating now. Shenton to take them on. Good clean tackle by Joel Penny, but you can see how close they are. Here's McGoldrick. Kick him up the ass. Smith. Good chance to press here for witness. It's Nanny. He's pushing himself forward. Oh, did he get that down? Did he get it down? He's celebrating. It's a lifeline for witness. Give him a rap for staying in there, but make him a word that we've got to kick over here now. Well, the 
was only a couple of minutes before the break. Castleville had just been looking to go through their tackles here. Big pass by Wilkes. Here comes Nani. Oh, he's half through. And he has support so from Moon. Griggs is on the inside. Griggs with a pass to Pele. Oh, he's dropped it. What a chance wasted. Right, listen. It's been like the hell of not it? First 25 minutes, half an hour. It's to your credit, to your fitness and to, and to your effort, that the score's like it is, and we're right in the game. It's took a score from Mick before all your body language and your effort and everything's come up. I'm watching you, and slowly but surely your body language started going down. We got that try, totally different team. So we're right in the game. We are right in the game. Absolutely awesome. I mean, a few little, little niggle bits, but absolutely awesome. Fantastic. We keep on up though, we do basics eight. We can do it, we'll be back. Back in big time. It could have been. How can I say? It could have been a shit game, but it isn't, so this one. But it is a great game. I've, I've spoiled you, it. 40 minutes, it's as simple as that. You be brave, you get your hands on the ball, you get in positions what you don't think you can get in, you get back on a kick chase to escort, you kick chase, you run till you drop. You've 40 minutes, black and white. Fair enough? Yeah. Yes, our okay. game, keep going. Keep going. Witness respond to Steve's words with some early pressure and a chance for McNannin, but agonisingly, he's held up on the line. Then, just minutes later, the Tigers roar down the other end. That's a fabulous kick by Brough. He has support too from Guttenbile. Try Castleford. They're back in charge. And there's bags of time left now. There's bags of time left. Loads of time left. Here's Henderson. On to Charles. Now it's Brough. Promising again. Shenton with a finish. Good try. Castleford are in cruise control now. It's back to Brough. Oh, he's kicking them to death. 26 points to four. Again here, witness his defence is hanging on grimly, but here's Westerman. It is heartbreak now for witness. Here's Charles. It's Clayton. Castleford are going to the Super League. The tries which they've got have been excruciating. Here's Smith. Oh, that's clever. Here's Wilkes. That's powerful, but it's only consolation. Disappointing when you bought both the props against players. Yes, bro. It really has been outstanding today, has Danny Brock. Well, that's a good ball. It's good by us on the angle, on the stretch, on a day when Castleford have hardly been stretched. Countdown comes now. Ten seconds from Super League. But it's part time again for Castleford. Welcome back to the top flight. So we probably put our worst performance in for the most important game of the year and can't do that can in grand finals. Fantastic performance from Castleford in the first uh, second of the game to the last second of the game and on the back foot all the time and um, you know all credit to them. There's worse things in life, isn't there? I've got a, you know, a good family and sometimes you've got to put things into perspective and then that's what I'll do. So another playoff series completed and for the Castleford Tigers, the good times are definitely back. We plan to play our best game on grand final day and that's the ball the preparation went into. We had some doubters at the start of the year but I thought the boys were outstanding there tonight and full credit to them. Uh, massive team performance, you know, 1-17, to 17. it's in just me, man at max. It's the crop forwards, the second rows, your wingers taking your shit carry. It's brilliant, man. outstanding that they did that. It was fantastic. I mean, the crowd, the support, you know, just amazing. I haven't experienced anything like that before. And, um, you know, I think that they'll be very proud of us and I know they're looking forward to, to next year.